All right, so without further ado, you know, the way that we like to demo uh, Groove and do these webinars is just to jump right in. Uh, you know, just, just jump right into it. Let's, let's show them what it can let's do show them right what it away. Can do. Absolutely. And then we'll start to go into some other stuff. So we are going to go pull up uh, a browser, a web browser, and it just so happens I pulled up my favorite. And my favorite, that'll be Chrome. Okay, so there's Chrome. So we're logged into a Groove box now, or a Groove server for Windows, and that'll make more sense in a moment. And uh, as you can see, it's a secure connection. So what I want to do is be able to log in. So I'm going to type in my credentials, Groove Admin, and then my password, and click Sign In. Pretty straightforward, just clicking right in, and look at that, that's us. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are in the uh, conference room. Uh, we're all uh, sitting around the big conference table, and this is where we're performing our webinar today from. So let's go to the home screen here, Ben. What do you say? Yeah, sure. So there you go. This, is, uh, this would be the default home screen had I not logged in previously. So it's pretty simple. It's, it's using an image here. We can use um, uh, PNGs, GIFs. We can use JPEGs, anything you like there. Uh, any of those will, will certainly work. So let me get uh, to the next screen. And let's go down here to the building overview. One of the things we've done here at Opto is uh, this is our manufacturing facility as well. So we have about 150,000 square foot facility where we make all our stuff, including the Groove, uh, uh, the Groove product. Um, and as you can see, there's a, an, an image there. There's some navigation links that allow me to go to other places. And I've got some real-time information coming in from various sensors throughout the building, including the building power. Right now, we're at a three, 360, 340 kW base load. Temperatures, chiller information, all kinds of stuff. So let me click over to shipping zone. Now we're going to a separate part of the building and pulling back data from there. Now, as you can see, I've got some live data. I've got some images and so on. But let me show you this. This is really cool. I'm going to click on the lower left-hand corner of my um, browser there, and I'm just simply going to drag and resize it. And look at that. Yeah, check that out. Images, text, data, everything has resized. Completely resized. So it doesn't matter whether you're using, a, say, a 4x3 or a 16x9 display. Everything sizes uh, resizes and scales gracefully. Yeah. Images, uh, live data, you name it. In fact, let me show you something else really cool with Groove and its ability to bring in live video. So here's a couple of uh, uh, four IP cameras from around the area. There's one here in the San Diego Bay. It looks like it's a nice day down there. A little gloomy here in Temecula. That's a uh, uh, IP video camera that's on the top of a tower. And then we also pulled in an image of Yosemite National Park. Yeah, there was some water coming over that waterfall uh, a week or two back. Yeah, this time of year, though, it's all dried up. And then, of course, a beautiful shot of the southwestern United States desert down there in Moab, Utah. So one more time, just like all of our other stuff, live video also completely scales gracefully. Absolutely. There might be a bit of lag on the audience view there, but uh, everything scales just absolutely beautifully and smooth and uh, it's really clear and again just to make it perfectly clear that you know the live video the text the buttons everything in groove just scales gracefully no matter what size device you're viewing it on so we'll come down here another thing that uh, you know we have of course with groove is the ability to control things so in this case i'm going to send a, uh, some information to a website to pull back some data so in this case it's a weather station so I'm going to go to San Diego, California, and there you can see it pulled back all of the uh, weather data from San Diego. Click another button, sends information back to Groove. Groove goes out and uh, retrieves that uh, information as well. Once again, uh, control objects as well are completely scalable, as you can see there. So cool. the next thing I'm going to, uh, you know, one of the things we're going to introduce today, Ben, which is brand new, is our new OPC UA capability. And that's a, the ability of Groove to be a client to an OPC UA server. So what we've done is created some uh, demos here. Let's show them one. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk about this some more, but let's show it off. So uh, this, some of you may be familiar with a company called Rockwell Automation. They make a, a line of products uh, named Allen Bradley. And there, there we have a, a little Allen Bradley Control Logics, no, a Compact Logics PLC. It's supported by something there. Yeah, it looks like it's being held up by some Opto 22 solid state relays. Well, it looks like they're fit for the job. So we're going to go ahead and click a button here. It's a control object. And I want to turn on an LED. So Groove is communicating through the OPC UA server, which is, of course, configured mm -hmm. to communicate with the Rockwell PLC. 
and bada bing, bada boom. Yep, you can see that's pretty quick, pretty responsive. Yes, it is. So this is all well and good. We're, we're doing this from a PC. We can log in from anywhere using a, a standard web browser. But what really sets Groove apart is its mobility. So Ben, if you wouldn't mind bringing up a, an image from the um, from your iPhone. So, hey, hang on a minute. Whose iPhone? You're going to get the, <laughs> the Android guys driving the iPhone here. So uh, this should be fun. Here we so, go. There we go. And uh, All right, we okay. pop that down. Nice. Okay, okay gonna, there's your home screen. I'm going to resize that phone because I know how imposing that can be for you Android folks. Yeah, so. that was a little oversized. Okay, so I'm going to go into the Groove app here. And uh, let's pull up that same screen, shall we? Let's go to the Control Logic screen. There it is there. Oh, okay. So now I can see it both in my mobile view and on my desktop view, and they look relatively similar. And, and you know what? It works exactly the same. I'm just going to touch on your iPhone here, turn on that button, and there we go. Well, that seems to work pretty well. Yep. Terrific. Okay. Ben, while you're there, would you also uh, navigate over to the KPI screen, please? Absolutely. Let's okay. uh, jump in here. So. And while Ben's doing that, I'm also going to navigate to the same screen over here on my browser. And here you can see uh, something that we call high performance HMI. When our engineers st first started developing Groove, we wanted to develop an interface that was not only easy to use and simple to use, but also created uh, a way of understanding what was happening in any type of process event. So for example, it's something you call situation awareness and that's what we see here. We're using high performance graphics and at a glance we can see what's going on with the surface mount line. Oh and by the way we have a uh, a live video down there of our surface mount line. And, and while this data is all uh, as demo data, uh, those machines do indeed exist there on our plant floor. Right, the, the principle maintains though, you know, that we've got eight pieces of data there and very quickly I can sweep my eye across and see that all the arrows in the green except for line seven so we can go and investigate straight away and, and hone into the problem. Terrific, so fantastic. Let's, uh, let's move on. That was a quick glimpse into what Groove is all about. So I think the next step now is to really, let's start taking a look at uh, why Groove. Why, why does this matter and why did we uh, actually, why did we build this product? Um, so one of the things that uh, we've been hearing a lot about is this use of mobility devices, smartphones. You have one, I have one, I think everybody has one. They just want to figure out a way of getting to some of their data by using these devices. Absolutely. So you have a couple of options. The first one would be to go to your existing HMI SCADA vendor and say, hey, I need a mobile option. <laughs> There's a few snags with that though. <laughs> well, for one, it's pretty difficult to do, and two, oh my gosh, have you looked at the pricing for those, uh, those options? Some of it is uh, stratospheric. Yes, for sure. And you know, they're, they're very time and labor intensive and require a lot of, a lot of software and, and separate servers and so on. Well, and you know the other thing, Benson, what we found when we were testing some of these out, some of them required very specific browser plugins. Now, that might be all right for a PC, but when you come to browser plugins on mobiles, phones, and uh, tablets, well, all of a sudden things change because, for example, one of them we looked at required Silverlight. Mm -hmm. That's so that Microsoft would, technology. Right, so mm -hmm. it only worked on Microsoft tablets and phones. So how's it going to cut it for your, uh, your iOS? Right, exactly. And another, uh, another vendor we've seen actually requires Java on all the devices. And you know that makes it very platform in, uh, dependent on whether it's a PC or what type of mobile device you're using. So, and, and some of the solutions we looked at were also half-baked. You know, it was, uh, I almost felt a little embarrassed. Some of the vendors said, oh yeah, we have a solution. You just use Log Me In or, or VNC or PC Anywhere to your existing SCADA solution. And mm. you know, we, we tried that. And how did that work out for you, Benson? Yeah, not so good. On a small little handheld device, having to pan and scroll and try to get a sense of what was going on is very difficult. Uh, with a VNC or a remote desktop yeah, solution. Just didn't have the flexibility at all. Okay, so the existing HMI SCADA market doesn't look like it has an offering for me, so what are my other options? Well, you could always roll your own, and it, you and I aren't afraid of a bit of code, so that's exactly what we did. We said, okay, we don't like any of those solutions, let's build our own. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that does it. You know, the good news is that we were using technologies that are readily available. They're standardized. You know, HTML, JavaScript, 
uh, you know, Apache web servers connected to databases. I mean, let's face it, uh, applications like Facebook and Gmail and all those are built on these. It shouldn't be so hard, should it? Right. And, you know, while we got it going and it was a great proof of concept, really, at the end of the day, it was a debugging and troubleshooting and support nightmare. Not to mention, if you just wanted to make one little change, suddenly you're going into code again. And, right. you know, yeah, you maybe we're not afraid of a little bit of code, but a lot of people don't want to be coding to build applications for their mobile devices. Exactly. So there's got to be an easier way. Well, there is an easier way, and that's why we're here today. It's called Groove, and Groove is the solution for mobile monitoring and control made easy. In a nutshell, it's a simple and easy method for building and viewing operator interfaces suitable for use on virtually any device of any screen size, any time or place. You know, and uh, Benson, I, you know, I, I feel a little uneasy saying it, but this automation application is so simple and so easy, it is just about fun. Fun? Yeah, I know. There's not too many automations, you know, pieces of software that you can say are fun, but just wait till you get to the demo at the end here. It is, it's, it's fun. Okay, we'll let you be the judge of that. So moving on, you know, a lot of times we're asked to define Groove. What, what is this thing? Can you, can you put some sort of moniker or definition on it? And, you know, frankly, that's a little difficult because Groove is kind of a new category. Is it a mobile app? You bet. Is it a web app? Absolutely. An HMI? It certainly can be. In fact, if uh, you know, one of the things that's cool about Groove is there's a lot of people who have investment in existing HMI and SCADA systems. Right. You can just use Groove right alongside that to web enable and mobilize your existing solution. So it augments your existing systems really well or sure stands does. on its own. Yeah. So is it an operator interface? Yeah, we're going to show you some stuff later that uh, will prove that op uh, Groove works great as an operator interface. And it's also a development tool and a web service, it's kind of all these things. So are we talking here, Manson, uh, of an epic revolution in the way that we develop and deploy these mobile and web-based apps? Well, many of our customers in press seem to think so, and we put many of their comments on our website at www.groove.com. So check them out. Of course, wait until after the webinar, but there's videos, there's case studies, there's all kinds of, uh, of information about how Groove is being used today. Excellent. So what, what does it look like? How is Groove packaged? If you, if you order a Groove, what are you going to get? Well, there's two options. First up, we've got the Groove box. Now, it's a industrially hardened web serving appliance. It's, it's a lot like your DVR at home. You just plug it into the power, you plug in your network, you plug in your cable, and you're good to go. It does one job and it does it brilliantly. It's plug and play. But there's another option, Benson. Yes, there is indeed. Uh, with something we call around here BYOB, which is, of course, bring your own box. So if you already have a Windows server uh, or perhaps just Windows 7 or 8 on a PC, uh, we can use Groove with that. It's just a software option for you. Uh, Support it again, Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows Server 2008 and 2012. Both provide the same functionality, are easy to set up, and get started building your screens. Absolutely. So you're talking about building screens here. So what development tools are needed? You know, compared to that roll your own code solution where we had lots of different uh, software development kits and all that sort of thing, what do we need to build and view Groove screens? Right. What do you need to download and install to your PC to start doing this? Right. Well, this is pretty cool. Wait for it because you only need one tool, the modern web browser. That's it. And better yet, you don't need to download any plugins or any add-ons. There's going to be no Java, no Silverlight, no Flash, just pure standard HTML5 and the other uh, standard technologies that have been built into these browsers for a long time. You know, Google Chrome, Firefox, IE10 and above, all of these support these advanced apps. And, you know, let's face it, Benson, you and I have been using things like Gmail and Google Maps, Yahoo, Facebook, Twitter in our browsers for a long time. We have indeed. In fact, even one of the largest software companies in the world, Microsoft, now offers their Office platform all within a browser. So I can create a spreadsheet, I can uh, create a document of some, I can even create a presentation all from a browser. So we're going to show you live in a demo section here exactly how we do that. So let's have a look how Groove works. So yeah, Groove works pretty straightforward. It's something that we call five minutes to Groove. And it it's, it's, goes something like this. Apply power to the Groove box or install Groove server for Windows. Log in with your web browser. Add your data sources, including Snappack controllers from Opto or your OPC servers. Create the pages, drag and drop, 
save and start grooving. Right, yeah, I, I want to point out that we've got an awesome video on our uh, groove.com website called Five Minutes to Groove. It's up there on YouTube. And I just want to tell everyone that's connected that, you know, we did that video in one take. There was no smoke and mirrors, it was five minutes. So we've got our screens created. We, we know what kind of development tool it is. We know, you know what Groove is it itself. Um, where can we view our application? Well, there's lots of places with modern web browsers, but let's break this down a little bit because it gets kind of interesting. Computers, of course, have a network connection and a modern web browser. So what options there all of a sudden become available? Well, you got Windows, you got Mac. I mean, can you imagine Macs being used? And I mean, Windows has always been the dominant operating system, so you've always been kind of forced to use Windows and you know its licensing and so on. But now you could use Linux and think how much money you could save there. Well, not just money, but what about stability? Oh, good point. So uh, a modern web browser and a network connection is all you need. But that's for a PC. What about my my tablet? Right, exactly. Now, you know, tablets have a modern web browser and they have network connectivity. A lot of tablets you can also get uh, cellular data plans as well. So you don't have to be near Wi-Fi, so you've got that as well. Okay, so I've got it on my PC, I got it on my tablet, but let's be let's be honest here. Most of the time I'm carrying my smartphone around with me. Right, yeah, you and I love our gadgets and while our tablets are usually not far from us, we've always got our smartphone with us. Uh, there's even these crossover devices now, not quite a phone, not quite a tablet, called a phablet. They've got modern web browsers, they've got uh, network connectivity. So if we can scale all the way from a PC down to a smartphone, how about scaling up? Absolutely. We go all the way up. You know, there's a, uh, uh, a store down the road that you and I love, Costco. Mm -hmm. Went down there and uh, for a couple of hundred bucks we bought a, a 50 inch Samsung Smart TV. That's, guess what? It's got a network. Uh, connectivity in it, it's got Wi-Fi, and it's got a web browser. So hooked it up to the Opto Wi-Fi, put in the Groove URL, and there it was. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty slick. And but you know, really the the, the issue here is is that you and I both kind of get the latest devices and and so on. But really, we have no idea what's coming out tomorrow. I mean, Apple just announced the new iPad 5, and uh, Samsung's got an announcement coming up. So we don't know what screen size is coming next. But that's the cool thing here, Benson. You know, is that Groove is going to work no matter what screen sizes are announced. You know, in the next big unveiling. I mean, have a look at this slide here, at the different. Uh, some of just just some of the different screen sizes that exist today, particularly amongst Android. So, you know, and we're saying, well, Groove can work with any of these. So, how's that done? What's the secret sauce? How is it possible to develop a screen that scales for any of these devices? Yeah, and I would think that's pretty important because I've seen some stuff that's not scaled right, but tried to put on your device, and it looks horrible. And uh, you know, that's the beauty of Groove. Groove incorporates this technology called SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics. It, what it simply means is you can build your screens any way you want, and Groove will automatically and gracefully scale every object on the screen beautifully with no extra effort and absolutely no programming. Yeah, now this is one thing I really appreciate. I can develop a Groove screen on any platform, send out the URL, and I don't have to worry about what size screen is going to view that. So these objects, to build these kind of scalable displays, we do that with uh, something we call Groove Gadgets. And they're grouped into three different categories, but each of those are all built on that same technology that allows you to lay it on the screen in any particular size you want. And then, of course, once it gets to the device that will be viewed upon, it will be, again, scaled gracefully and easy to see and, and use. Right, exactly. So there's three broad uh, categories of the gadgets. The first one is the page objects, things like lines, headers, dividers. These allow you to lay out and organize the screen exactly the way that you want uh, to view it, to give, you know, to give the look and feel of what you're looking for. And then you've got data objects. These are your LEDs, your checkboxes, gauges, you know, your trends, even your IP cameras. And, and these are ideal for like read-only applications. So they're going to pull data in from OPC servers and, uh, or from Snappack controllers. Right. So if you want to, you can just build a page that's just a read-only page. But we also, of course, have control gadgets and buttons, sliders, and text input for set points and things like that. Terrific. So let's talk a little bit about the Groove architecture. How do we get this put into our application, uh, whatever that might be? It could be a plant, it could be a facility, it could be an OEM machine of any kind, and it's pretty straightforward. You bolt it on if it's the Groove box or you uh, install it on your uh, Windows box and then connect one network interface to your control network, the other to the IT network. 
Right, and then you distribute that app via a secure URL. And the important thing to note is that Groove is server-based, so it's super easy to update and maintain the box. You don't have to worry about all the clients. So, Ben, we're talking about actually controlling or, or perhaps just monitoring stuff of automation systems, perhaps over the internet from our mobile device. I don't think we can have too much longer a discussion without covering security. It's, it's absolutely, and security is baked in right from the ground up with Groove. All traffic to and from Groove is via Secure Sockets Layer, or SSL. Now, this is the same security as your bank users. So if you're comfortable doing online banking, you're going to be very confident uh, using Groove. Absolutely. And then we also get a lot of questions about, well, I'd like to have internet access to Groove. And while Groove isn't meant to be on the edge of the, uh, you know, connected directly to the internet, we suggest it be on a corporate network. And the best way, most solid way of, of accessing that is through VPN yeah. technology. Yeah, no question. You know, and VPN has been around for a long time. It's well understood. It's well established. And because it's been around a long time, you know, things like iOS and Android have VPN clients built right into their mobile devices, so trivial to get up and running. Terrific. Okay, so we've got that part down. We know how to stick it into our uh, architecture. We've got security covered. What about communications? How do, what does Groove communicate with? Well, that's the great news and what we're announcing today for release uh, later next month and it's OPC UA client. What we've done is built an OPC UA client directly into Groove and that gives you access to hundreds of different drivers uh, all uh, by the OPC foundation. But more importantly what we're doing is, uh, I mean if you look at the who we're partnering with and that's Kepware, they're the leaders in, in OPC technology and this is just a few of the drivers that they have available uh, for their OPC server. So if you recognize your automation system or data acquisition system on the screen here, chances are 100% it's going to work with Groove. So let's take a quicker look, a closer look at the OPC UA server from Kepware. And um, getting back to those drivers, I, I encourage you to also go to kepware.com. They have a, a terrific list of all the drivers they support. And here's just some of them you see on the screen. So it's not just PLCs and DCSs, but also OPC client drivers. So you could actually be talking to another OPC server if you needed to. Right, and you can even talk to a database. You know, we've, we've set it up here and we've got a Groove talking to a MySQL database running on a Linux PC in another part of the Opto building. So that's, uh, that's really a terrific solution. We're using Kept Server here. It's a fantastic product, solid as a rock, and it well, works just beautifully with Groove. But remember as well that if you are an Opto 22 customer and you're using our Snappack system, uh, all Groove communications are native uh, with those devices. So let's just take a, uh, you know, a, a high level view at all of this then, Benson. Let's just take a minute to, to regroup. The big picture looks a little like this. Uh, you've got systems and devices over on the left. You know, PLCs, PACs, DCS, database, environmental sensors, cameras, and you know, perhaps other OPC DA uh, servers. They come into Groove either directly or via uh, OPC and then you present the screens that you build in Groove over to the devices on the right. It's sort of like uh, one website to rule them all, I think. There you go, and that's a, a nice high level view of how all the pieces kind of uh, correlate. So let's quickly talk about the components of Groove. What are the pieces and parts? And the first one is the Groove application, of course. And so there's two parts to that. There's Groove View, which is typically used virtually by everybody, operators, kiosks, or whoever, and Groove Build, where you build your screens. And then we'll talk quickly about uh, Groove View for mobile devices. So jumping into Groove View, you got a picture of that earlier when we did the demo, uh, and this is it, and it's very, very simple. Straightforward, you've got a, a gear icon up on the left that allows you to log in and log out, uh, or to switch to Groove Build if you have the, uh, the rights to do so. And then over on the left-hand side is your navigation to all of your pages. Right, and here's the bit that I love. In your same browser with, uh, with no extra software, no downloads, no plugins, not even PC administrator rights, you can go straight from Groove Build, if you're authenticated, in, uh, sorry, Groove View into Groove Build. And Groove Build is made up of a couple of different sections. So first up, down in the lower right, we have the gadgets. Now, the gadgets are uh, where you sort of start building your pages. You can drag and drop them onto your canvas in the center and uh, we've got a good range of gadgets there to get started. Depending on the gadget that you've got currently selected, you're going to have different properties. So that's in the upper right, 
and you can set ranges and colors and things like that. Of course, also, you can set up in the upper left the pages and the categories. You can run one category or you can run nested categories. Then we've got the tag chooser. Here's where you connect your gadgets to the tags from your different devices. And you'll note there, there's not a single line of code required anywhere. It's pretty cool. Now we're going to get to our optional GrooveView for iOS and GrooveView for Android. Now these are both free apps and they're available from uh, the respective marketplaces. And what we've done here is we've wrapped the browser in the, uh, in the mobile device and made it look and feel like a native app. It gets rid of the, the signal strength and battery and all that to and from and URLs. It hides all of that and it really makes the, the Groove app feel like a native app there, Benson. It's pretty neat. Yeah, but you know what's really cool is something that uh, is available on iOS devices, and that is, uh, it's called guided access mode. At least that's what it is in iOS. We call it kiosk mode. And what it allows you to do is take an iOS device ranging from an iPod Touch all the way up to an iPad, and actually lock the device down to the Groove app. And this simply means that, you know, regardless of somebody pressing the power button or the home button or anything, they won't exit the app and say, go over and play Angry Birds. The device is locked down to the Groove app. So, so wait, you're telling me that we've got a, uh, a, a device with Gorilla Glass, a network connection, and a modern browser that is just locked in to being a uh, interface device for a process. Sounds like it may be changing the landscape for operator interfaces moving in the future. Uh, yeah, I think watch this space. Yeah, and we've even got one here in the conference room that we use to turn the lights on and off and adjust the, uh, the uh, HVAC, so absolutely. Okay, so I think the next thing that we, we absolutely need to talk about is what does it cost? So here we go, here's the pricing. Um, it is amazing. At $19.95, we've got the Groove Box, and it's preloaded with Groove. It has everything you need. There's no user limits, no tag limits, no server limits, no client licenses, nothing of the sort. $19.95. For $17.95, there's the software-only version, so you can load that on your uh, Windows Server boxes and get up and running. Same functionality as the Groove Box. And then for those of that want to use the OPC uh, UA server capabilities, we have the OPC UA client option, one-time fee of $895. And then the whole thing is wrapped up with a, a very affordable 10% uh, annual maintenance based on uh, the, the MSRP of the system you're using. But Benson, I think we've got a special deal for those of us on the webinar. We do indeed. Uh, we're so excited about OPC UA client. Uh, the client option and, and working with the folks at Kepware that we are pro, uh, putting together some promotional pricing for all everybody on the webinar today. If you order before 11.22 or November 22nd, which is when Groove 2.0 and the OPC client option will be available, you can choose either the Groove Box or Groove Server for Windows plus the OPC UA client option for the low price of 2,222 bucks. Very nice. If you've already got either Groovebox or Groove Server for Windows and you just want to add on that OPC option, then we've got a special pricing deal, again, if you order before November 22nd of $6.95 just for the OPC option. And that's a $200 savings, so that's uh, Pretty sweet. nothing to sneeze at. So uh, all those products will ship on 11.22, so orders placed today, uh, products will ship uh, then. Ben, I think uh, we've done enough talking. Let's show folks how this is done. Absolutely. I love this part of the, uh, the webinar. Okay, so uh, what's your favorite browser? It's Chrome. Okay, well, let's get over to, uh, to Chrome there. I'm going to do my uh, alt tab here and bring up, there we go. You've got my Chrome browser for me. I do, and let me just uh, make it a little larger for you. I'm going to pass you the mouse. I'm going to pass you your iPhone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Here we go, folks. So I've logged in uh, with Benson's session here earlier. We'll just go up and we can see that uh, we're in Groove, uh, Groove Build here. And I've got, uh, amongst all the screens that Benson showed you, there's one here called Remote I.O. And what we've got is we've got some uh, Opto 22 I.O. in another part of the building. And I see a light globe here that uh, I want to turn on and off. So let's go into Groove Build. And I, I still get a bit of a kick out of this. So I'm going to go from View Mode to Build. Boom that quick, I've just loaded a complete development environment for, uh, for Groove right there in my browser. So let's turn this light on and off. There's two ways to connect gadgets. Uh, first of all, what we can do is we can select the gadget that we want straight from the gadget palette. So I see a light globe, I see a button, I'm going to click and drag that, uh, that button over. 
And there's a little red uh, slash on there saying, hey, this is not connected to any tags. So let's go up to button properties on the top right and select uh, our gadget, uh, our, sorry, our uh, tag chooser here. And I'm gonna drill down to demo four. There's a digital output point and I've got a out digital output point here called lamp on off. I select that, select update gadget, and essentially that's it. But you know what, let's give it a nicer name. Benson, you'll need a keyboard. Yeah, I'll do that for you, Ben. Let's uh, type in there lamp control. Okay, and I know that you know when the lamp comes on, it's sort of like a yellowy color. So let's go ahead and select that. So I'm done. Now, you know we can uh, resize the object here. We can make it very large, make it finger friendly, or we can shrink it down a little bit and it snaps to a light little grid here. Again, that's all the high performance HMI, making it easy for everyone to align things. That's it. Not a single line of code. I save my changes, switch to Groove View, and I'm ready to go. So, you know me, Benson, if I see a button, I gotta click it and uh, we hit the button and there we go. The lights come on with the, uh, with the video feedback. We click the button and the light goes out. Really responsive, very quick, and just a whole lot of fun. There's, there, there we go, I used, yeah. uh, I used that word. Just as you promised. So I see a, a little orange sensor above that light globe. I'm pretty sure that's a, uh, a temperature sensor, so let's throw an analog gauge on here and show the folks how easy that is. Go back into build mode. I said there was two ways to add gadgets. You can select your gadget, or you can drill down for your tag. So I'm gonna to go to my tag chooser here. There's a lot of sources there, Ben. I got OPC, you yep. got some other controllers. There's a bunch of different sources. Again, no tag limits so, and no sources limits. So I'm gonna come down here to analog input points. And uh, I see that there's one there called lamp temperature. Now, when I click on this, Groove intelligently sorts all of the gadgets and just provides the gadgets that are appropriate for that type. So I'm gonna click and drag my round gauge. I'm gonna bring that guy over. Make him just a little bigger, shall we? And slide him up there under the... Uh, and uh, I'm ready to go, but let's give it some ranges. Benson, if you wouldn't mind, maybe 70 to, I don't know, perhaps 90. There we go. Yeah. We can change the needle color. We can change the number of decimal places. We can add zones around the end. And I don't know if you noticed, but as Benson was typing in the limits, the gauge automatically uh, refactored itself to those limits. We're done. Again, not a single line of code anywhere. Save all changes, switch to Groove View, and there's our data. Let's turn on the lamp and see the heat, heat up that sensor. There we go, look at that. We can see the gauge uh, ticking upwards. Now, so Ben, I think I wanna see that on my iPhone. So uh, let me go back to uh, setting up my uh, AirPlay to the, to the screen here, and let's see if we can pull up the, um, uh, the mirroring of the iPhone. There it is, so I'm gonna click Done. And uh, let's go back over to Groove. And as I recall, what you were adjusting there was actually the remote I.O. So I'm going to navigate. Well, where's all my changes? Yeah, that's because I was logged in earlier to this Groove project. And subsequently, I've added some controls. What you just added just now. Exactly. So to get those on my mobile phone, what do I need to do? You simply go up to the gear icon and click Refresh Groove View. It's going to ah, go yeah. back to the server, pull all those changes down, and what do you know, look at that, you're up and running, ready to go with those gauges. How about that? Now, notice the layout is eh, maybe not too optimal. So we're gonna fix that for you, Benson. We're gonna go back into Groove Build, and what we've got here are two tabs. We've got the PC tab. I'll make that a little bigger since you shut down your iPhone, thank you. Uh, we've got the PC and uh, tablet tab, but we've also got the handheld tab, and here it matches what you saw in your project. Have a look at this. What I can do in the handheld tab is I can move things around and I can resize them to suit specifically the handheld or portrait device. Now, look at this. I'm going to go back to desktop. They haven't moved and they haven't resized. These two views get built concurrently, but you're allowed to have complete and independent control of them and lay them out exactly the way you want. So there we go, Ben. So I've put the lamp control at the top for you. I'm going to save that. Okay, let me bring my iPhone back up here. And uh, let's go back to this application. So once again, all I need to do then, right, is uh, refresh Groove and get my your most recent changes. And let's see if we can do that. Okay, it's loading those pages now. 
There we go, your button's at the top. Boom, well, like you, if I see a button, I gotta press it, so let's go, there it is. Okay. There we go, look at that. And it's reflected, of course, in the uh, PC as well as straight away on your mobile device. So what you were able to do in, in literally under a minute is, is really change my mobile interface and, and in essence push it out to all the mobile devices including my iPhone. I've customized it exactly the way that you might want it uh, viewed on your iPhone there Benson. Wow that is uh, that's pretty amazing. Ben while you're there let's uh, let's would you uh, navigate over to the uh, conference room again uh, for me and I'm gonna do the same here on my iPhone and as you can see on the screen I have a, an option there to go to conference room read only. So I'm going to click on that and it allows me to see the status of what's going on uh, just in the conference room. But note something that's different. On Ben's screen through the PC interface you have buttons. Absolutely. I don't. What I have are LEDs. That simply means that the login I'm using for my mobile device has different rights. So it doesn't uh, allow me to go and write to those lights or turn them on and off. And as you can see there, as Ben changes those lights, ooh, it's getting dark in here. It's getting a little dark, yeah. <laughs> um, we were seeing those same changes being reflected over on the mobile device, but again, I can't click on them to turn them on and off. So really, you can you know, create your screens for different types of users, different types of devices, all with no programming, all in about a fun, a lot of fun there. A lot of fun, yep, definitely. First of all, thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. A couple of things, uh, please check out uh, groove.com. There's tons of information up there. Uh, also watch that space very closely because very soon uh, we're gonna have an opportunity for you to actually try Groove for free. A two hour trial will be available for Groove coming up very shortly. Um, and now you couple that with the folks over at Kepware who also allow you to download the Kep Server EX product for free and all the drivers for two hour trial mode. So between those two, uh, we think we have a way to, to uh, actually prove it to yourself how awesome this uh, yeah, product no question. is. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. Okay, with that, then we are going to sign off. My name is Benson. My name's Ben. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon and uh, come back and see us again soon. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Have a terrific day.